Okay, let's have a look at the other pairs for the weekend review. I covered the US dollar and the four major pairs in yesterday's video, so please see that for a look at three views I currently have on the dollar. So let's continue with the weak dollar idea and look at commodities. Um, if you've been watching the videos, you know that I've been bullish on oil and mostly bullish on gold and silver. However, now very bullish on gold and silver. So starting with oil, I presented this view about th three weeks ago, maybe, about a possible low in oil, and I kept it open for another gyration with the note there. However, it looks like we're not going to get another gyration down. It looks like this alt X idea is going to be <clears throat> removed and we have a bullish swing on our hands for a target above 55 towards 62, 65 basically for a larger three wave correction in oil. This has gotten the legs now. I think it's extended beyond the area of an X wave and a bullish count on this could be it's it's in wave three here. So any three wave correction is a buy in this and I'm looking forward to move higher. My target area is above the high in January of this year and a move towards anywhere above that. So above 55 towards 62 to 65 euros, um, dollars rather. So that ties in with a weak dollar as well. Now I've posted some stuff on Twitter about this thanks to Robert Ballin and his excellent analysis <coughs> and uh, some other information about it. But in any case, that's my view on crude oil. Now going to gold and silver, as I've said, I want to see the monthly close, but it looks like we're breaking out on gold and I specifically want to see the monthly close on silver. Now, <coughs> sorry, just a second. What I want to say about this is that I got a great tip from a guy called Forex Trading. I'm going to put his Twitter account handle in the description box below with the timing. He showed me a chart of the gold-silver ratio. And um, visit his Twitter handle because he's going to make a video about it, he told me. <coughs> and the gold silver ratio is suggesting that there is going to be a heavy move in favor of silver because right now the ratio is too high, um, historically out of sync, and it's looking like it's going to reverse back to a historical um, average, and that heavily favors a percentage move in terms of silver. So this is the monthly chart on gold. You can see it's breaking out here. This is a buy the dip scenario. So gold is bullish, buy the dips in my opinion. Silver, if we look at the monthly, it's putting in a very, very bullish monthly candle. So if this closes bullishly like this, I'm going to look for a move above the Jan, sorry, July 16 high, above $21 towards $23.24 but above 21 in any case, because this can be counted as an impulsive wave here, and obviously a three wave correction with that brief flash crash here. And as I showed on Twitter, if you look on the daily, if you negate the flash crash low, we actually have a bullish wedge forming in here. So a breakout of this and a breakout of the possible channel is a very bullish view here, but in any case, Looking at the monthly on this and combining it with the idea of the gold-silver ratio, I'm very bullish here on silver above $21. I just want to see the close on Monday when the candle closes. So weak dollar, strong commodities, one reason among many. Okay, dollar pairs I covered. Now sinking with a gold bullish view is a bearish US dollar yen view. How bearish I really cannot say because I still like the long-term idea of this pair moving higher, 
But right now, I have to put that idea on the back burner, and I'm not going to look to trade this, but I am going to suggest that this is just a bigger three-wave correction. And then when it gets to this region, I can view it again and see if we get a turn up there. But for now, US dollar looks like it has made it's make it's going to continue to make a move down. Ignore the count here. The bigger idea is probably going to be one, two, and three. And it will be interesting if in the future Peter Schiff's um, idea, speculative idea, that the negative correlation between this pair and gold itself eventually dies out. That is kind of looking like it could be a possibility later on. But in any case, for now, US dollar yen down, gold up, as the negative correlation historically points to. Okay, I'll do the Canadian pairs last. Actually, no, I'll do the Canadian pairs now. Now, the issue with the Canadian pairs my idea of a wave three low here in US dollar Canadian, it looks like I'm probably going to have to change this count again. It's not dead yet, but um, my move from 137.50 to 124 is finished. I said 124 and then I added maybe 123 after. We have historical trend line support at 123 or high 122s and I would look for a bounce there. The move has been savage and brutal. So let's see what happens here. If we can get actually over the next couple of days a small kind of sideways move for a couple of days, that can actually be wave four and then the new low would be wave five completing the move. So that's the idea for now. Great one, this. Okay, um, Euro Canadian. Now, the issue with the Canadian currency is that we had the rate hike earlier this month. And um, I'm running this idea that the Bank of Canada may instigate another, may make another rate hike later this year because they had two rate cuts in 2015. And the Canadian economy looks like it's extremely strong. I mean, aside from the real estate, high, high prices in real estate, and that amazing chart about how I think it's 2% of Canadian GDP now comes from um, just the commission in property trading, something ridiculous like that. There's a good chart of that. Um, the Canadian GDP, the Canadian economy has been strong with very high above trend growth, uh, employment growth, and the GDP print on Friday was again very high. If you look at this, I'll pull this up because it's worth seeing from Friday. They've been above expectation for the past 10 or 12 months or so. And, uh, well, aside from a couple, two instances where they were not, and one equal or two equal, everything seemed, mostly it's above expectation. So the idea I'm thinking about is we may be looking at another rate increase in the Canadian dollar later this year. And I'm wondering if traders will be pricing that in. Because Euro-Canadian, the weekly is slightly bearish. I would say that it's a continuation type of candle with the stocks pointing down. It's kind of hanging there like it's a continuation. The breakout, I mentioned the typical breakout rules of wanting to see a bull flag and a buy signal. That did not work. It retraced violently from there. And uh, I would actually consider a down move again here, but again, I would only consider it because, as I've said, for a week or so, maybe more now, in Euro-Canadian, Aussie-Canadian, and New Zealand-Canadian, let the move play out. Let it make a decision because it looked like it was going to break out. It reversed. Is it going to break down now? Maybe. But uh, I don't know. So let this play out. You don't want to take a high-risk position at potential support 
high risk downside position at potential support. So I would let this play out, let it determine what it's going to do. Now it does look weak, but I cannot say that this is one, two, one, two, one, two, three. I mean, that, that would be ultra bearish and it's not impossible. But um, let it resolve, I think. The big move in US Canadian has passed for now. Euro Canadian, maybe it'll edge up. So far, it's looking more like a three way move. It doesn't quite have the price action of a third wave bearishly. It's like a, like a three wave correction so far. But let's see how that emerges. Aussie Canadian, I would stay on the sidelines about this. It has not convincingly broken back up into trend yet, but also it has not broken down either. And although the four hour bullish wedge worked out this week, it's immediately come back to it. It's just been a three wave correction out of that. So I would stand aside from this pair, let it resolve. The weekly candles keep closing under the broken trend support, but I cannot rule, up an rule out another move up. Now the monthly candle is not closed, so I'm not going to speculate on it yet. Well, I'm not going to what I would say, let me actually, yeah, I am going to speculate on it. If it closes as it looks now, I would think it's probably going to make a kind of fake move up and then reverse down. But uh, a few days ago, or maybe just on Thursday, yeah, on Thursday, I was looking at this as a bullish candle for another possible move up because the stocks haven't quite gotten there yet. So I'll leave this pair again because it needs to decide what it's going to do. And there's no t point taking a position here because you don't have an edge. Same with New Zealand Canadian. It's trying to regain the trend line. It's not yet succeeding, but it's not yet failing either. So again, the weekly candle is indecisive. I cannot say it's a bearish continuation candle. It needs another week or a deciding figure, deciding move on that. So the Canadian pairs, when they were the main focus a few weeks ago, they are now not a focus at all for a potential trade. Okay, Euro Pound, not much to say. This pair has tossed me around since um, <laughs> December 2016 or so. I'm giving the bulls the benefit of doubt here for the upside move. I don't have a bearish view on it at this stage. Euro Australian, the weekly hammer of last week, it's, it tried to find some traction and f get a move up. Now the issue is on this, I'm viewing this as a completed five wave advance in Euro Australian. And we have a simple three wave correction here. Now, because of the divergence on here, it's got a very bullish situation like New Zealand US dollar had back in back a few months ago. I've been over that before, I'm not going to look at it now, but it's a similar situation. Now, I want to give the benefit to the bulls because you can count this as a five wave move. It's a bit awkward, but it can be done. So I would give the benefit to the bulls and let them see if they can take it up here. And the worst thing, well, okay, I don't want to speculate about the worst thing, but if it fails, there may be another retracement down, but I am looking at this bullish overall. There is still the price gap, but I'm not going to consider that as a possibility, or rather not a possibility, as a necessity. At one point I was, but considering the three-wave action and the bullish divergence, I'm not going to view that necessarily as something that has to be filled. Let's see how it emerges. I just want to give the bulls the benefit of doubt here because it's in line with a bullish move. So break above here and a bull flag and continuation, bull flag on smaller time frame and continuation would be good for the bulls. They need to get it back above here. And then we can talk about a higher move, much higher move possibly. And I'll look at the monthly close at the end. The Now a pair that I don't have a any clarity on in terms of like trading edge is Euro New Zealand. And I'm wondering if I'll leave the speculation on Euro Australia in there, but this I don't have a bullish edge on, and I'm thinking still it needs to have another move down to complete a three-wave move overall. Maybe to here, maybe lower, I don't know. But um, I cannot at this stage take it bullishly. Right now this looks like a three-wave move, 
I think at this stage it still needs a bigger three wave correction. So I'm going, I'm standing back from this. There's no trading edge here. It's in the middle of nowhere. The weekly chart has been just going sideways for a couple weeks and um, I would say it probably looks weaker than it does stronger, but that doesn't mean anything in terms of trade. So another pair to stand back from, let it resolve, let it tell you what it wants to do, and then take it from there. I have to give the bears the benefit of doubt here in this. And of course, Euro Australian has been running essentially in tandem with Euro New Zealand, as you can see here. So if this does come down for a, th a third part of the correction, you could assume that your Australian might come for one more low and then start a move. Just a speculation. But for now, I want to give... They may break apart, maybe if Aussie, if the Australian dollar is weaker. But in any case, I'm going to give the bulls the benefit in Euro Australian and the bears the benefit in Euro New Zealand and see if the bears can take it in this pair back down because I don't have anything to the upside. Aussie New Zealand, this was a slow move coming, but it's looking like it's breaking down here. Uh, I was talking to one trader about this this week, and it, we both had the feeling that it's we both had the feeling that the price is not giving the feeling of something that wants to break down. Now, I am going to propose one other thing that if it comes back down to this region, and there's still bullish divergence on the chart, I will reconsider this because it does not yet have a strong bearish view, a strong bearish price action, or it's not giving a bearish feeling as such. It's looking okay on the daily, but on the lower time frame, it's a bit questionable. I'm going to stick with the bearish view overall. I'm just a little bit cautious about it at that juncture. Let's see it break down and really collapse this week because the overall view of a Z wave here is preferred. So I'm going to give the bears the benefit of doubt. It has not given any sign that it's bullish. I want to make that clear. It's looking bearish on the weekly and on the daily. So it needs to prove that it's going to turn up and move higher here. There's no evidence of that yet. It's just that the bearish feeling has been missing the past five days. So treat this bearishly until it proves otherwise and look for a move towards 102 to complete the bigger three-wave idea. WXYZ or just WXY as you prefer and see if we can get that. Okay, Bitcoin I haven't looked at. I talked about it this week. I want to propose one idea. Now, I don't know what it's doing now because my in my video last week, all the bullish speculation on Bitcoin was stipulated on this making a five-wave move. That was the whole basis for the 4800 idea. This, however, looks like a three-wave move. If we look at the four hour. I would count this as three waves, pretty straightforward. So I cannot talk about 4,800 or higher if we don't get a five wave advance. So what could this be? And I mentioned on Twitter this week, it could be a flat. Now I want to give the bulls the benefit of doubt here. And maybe it will explode up towards the $4,800 level. But I want to give the bulls the benefit of doubt at this level. And the flat idea is this. If it does continue up and makes a new high, the idea is, yes, maybe it will extend. So if you're long, try to stick with it, of course. But, you know, the idea is that since this is looking like a three-wave move, I'm wondering if this is a flat Overall, I mean, that would look like, just a second, that would look like this. You have a three-wave move down, and you may get a three-wave move up. And this three-wave move to either an equally high level, like $2,993, as I mentioned last week, or a break above 3000 slightly, if it's a three-wave move and it stalls out, it's going to turn into a flat, which will be a five-wave 
move for C back to 1900 or 1800 or 1700 to complete larger wave four. Some people will call this a double top where you get two highs across here. Elliott wave traders will look at it as a possible flat where you have three, three, and five, and then a move up. Now, that's the other idea I have here because it's not five waves. Now, it may do something like US Canadian, where a price pattern that failed to make a fifth wave low looked like a triangle, but ultimately turned out to be the first five wave down of a bearish swing. And guessing like that would propel this higher. But uh, I have to take it as I see it. I mean, if I keep guessing on things or forcing counts, forcing counts is a kind of sickness in Elliott Wave because it, it makes people try to twist price action into what they want it to be. And the only time I will force a count, that is the only time I will take price not as it appears, but as I like kind of want it to be, is in an extreme situation where nothing else is making sense and price behavior is forcing a move beyond kind of what I had going with the literal view. So I'm not going to force count this, just as I did not force count US Canadian on that triangle back around, what was that, 129 or so? I don't remember. But uh, I'm going to take this literally as a three-wave move, and I'm going to consider this a possible flat if it makes a new high, and then a rollover for C of a flat. So two views, either a big move up or a flat, which is what I'm going to prefer at this stage with a three-wave um, move. So those are the views on Bitcoin. I don't think it's going to put in a triangle here, maybe, but it doesn't look that way yet. And I don't have a more bearish view here. Here it's in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to give it to the bulls because this is really aggressive whatever it is, three waves, I think. And I'm going to look for higher, and then I'll be very suspicious of it around 3,000 if it gets back up there. So that's the view on Bitcoin. Wheat has keeled over. No trade there. I'm still thinking maybe it will find a low and turn back higher, but there's no evidence of that yet. Yes, it does look like a three-wave move, three-wave move overall. But uh, the monthly doesn't look too bad, so I'm going to see if we get a weekly base over the next week or two and see if the monthly can turn up, because the monthly stochastics are doing well, and by the close of July, they will be around the 50 level. And that could be good for a further move up. Soybeans are looking bullish here. I cannot rule out another low at this stage because it's still beneath this high. Still beneath this high. I need to see a break above that to completely change, but the bullish view from this week here has been working out, so I'm going to stick with the bullish soybeans view for now. And um, there's something else, I think, just a second. No, I think that's it. So, trades this week, long gold, long silver, long oil. Try to find an impulsive downside to Aussie New Zealand. And let the Canadian pairs resolve and let Euro New Zealand resolve and stick with the bullish edge on Euro Australian unless it tells otherwise. And Euro Pound, let it resolve too. Okay, have a good week. Bye-bye.